So what diseases does a whole food plant-based diet prevent, suspend, and or cure? <laughs> the, I, the number is, is uh, I, I don't know. I, all I know is some of the big ones like heart disease, cancers, various kinds and so forth. There were had some real respectable research done, it's quite clear. But I've given a lot of lectures in the last 20 years, uh, public lectures, and a lot of them are in medical schools. And the number of people who come up to me after the lecture and tell me about some problem with that was resolved is now well over, usually with tears in her eyes. I mean, these are really very personal stories. People saying, I did this, I did this, I did this, and here's what I got. I mean, I just had two people here already this morning. Uh, one was a Gulf War veteran who had some really serious problems. And I just heard about that just before coming here in this room. I hear that a lot. And so looking at the science, as I like to do, on that perspective, uh, not being the person to treat those, but just look at that, um, the, the breadth of effect is incredible. It's like, okay, we're going to be sick or we're going to be well. And we can be sick in all kinds of ways, all the way from our sort of cognitive natural state to our physical body. You say that we need to get out of the business of talking about individual nutrients, whether we're talking about dietary recommendations or whether we're talking about the amount of nutrients on the side of a box, food box package. Please explain why you say this and why you wrote a book called Whole on this topic. Well, the single, thinking about single nutrients, as I've already said a few times, single nutrients, yes, they can have effects if we test them very carefully. We can maybe see their effects, and, and they're significant. We can repeat it, that sort of thing. The problem is when whatever we see, whatever we see, good or bad, uh, what in, in the form of a single pill, many times is not the same as we see it when it's in consumed as whole foods. Of course, in the presence of whole foods, there's other things going on too. That's part of the holism metabolism concept. So a single nutrient may have an effect here when it's all standing alone. The light is shining right on that one nutrient. And it might do things exactly the opposite of what we may have thought. But when you send the whole food and everything working together, it's one of the really impressive perspectives on the concept of uh, holism. Please explain further what you mean when you say cancer starts with a mutation some chemical comes in and changes the DNA of the normal cell and converts it to a cancer cell. Well, I mentioned this before, but um, in any case, uh, cancer starts with a gene. That's basically a mutated gene. So a chemical comes in, zaps the DNA. We do some of that work ourselves. It causes that cell to change its gene structure. So now, if that cell, our bodies repair all that stuff. 99% or more of that, it's going on all the time. But if the cell divides with that little aberration, sometimes it gets entrapped in the new population of cells. Now we've got a cancer cell with a genetic imprint that can lead to cancer. That's what I'm saying. We're all, we all have some cells in our body that can probably give rise to cancer because of genes. The genes have been altered. But the real question the real question is not whether we have or don't have those kind of gene mutations. It's rather what do we do by way of fertilizing, feeding those things. And that com that's where food comes into play. Can you summarize everything we've talked about here today in 15 seconds? Yes. Eat whole food, plant-based food. Do not eat food that has animal protein in it. Exactly the opposite of what I thought at the beginning. And it's not just because the animal protein is in it. That's not 15 seconds, but <laughs> you know, just two, two, I have two things in mind. Eat, uh, you know, avoid, if possible, animal-based foods, number one. Number two, eat those, full, those foods kind of intact. We can cut them, dice them, and we can cook, and we can do all that kind of stuff. It doesn't make that much difference just as long as we're eating all the content in that food at the same time. That's what the body wants to look at. Two things. Do not, you know, try to avoid food with animal protein in it. 
not just because of poison, but that's the way it is. Eat the fruit whole. That sort of also says using oil or sugar. That's not a whole food. That's where that story comes from. What is it about the real truth about health conference that made you want to come here and speak? I was here before, as you know. Um, I think uh, yeah, the real truth about health, I mean, that's a, right, that's, that's a good concept. That's what uh, I, I like it. That's it. That's it. I, um, you're going to hear all kinds of opinions I don't subscribe to, <laughs> quite frankly, a lot. But uh, I like the concept. I like the concept. I like the fact that uh, it's an attempt to get out to the public. Uh, yeah. I'm always interested in that. For people that want to learn more about your work, where should they go? Read the China study. Number one, read whole. Take the course, maybe. Uh, we have got quite an operational group right now. My own family is very much involved. The co-author of the China study is now a physician. He was an actor in theater. Tom, he is now in charge of a research program at a major medical center and doing kind of carrying on for what I thought I have uh, another son who's very much into the environment. And he's created a system of pods, like 500 pods here and abroad. You know, that's kind of delivering a message to the public. Um, and he also is the director of a film called Plant Pure Nation. Uh, our daughter uh, got her, do her doctorate in education. Uh, she ended up then going to the Peace Corps working in the Dominican Republic, and she has had bringing students down from universities to spend some time with her on the question concerning the relationship between food and environment. She, it's, she's got a fantastic, uh, it's a very unique kind of experience. We're just setting this up as part of our online course. Uh, so um, she's the author of the book, The China Study Cookbook. Our daughter-in-law, same thing. Now we've got grandchildren <laughs> involved. Uh, one, one grandchild is in charge of that whole new dimension of food and environment in the Dominican Republic. They go there. They can see what's happening, you know, in real live color. Uh, another grandchild is uh, the co, he's m the editor of my, he's the with author of my new book, fantastic writer. And uh, another one is a nurse, you know, well, there's 20, two of us all together, spouses and so forth. We all eat this way. And right now we've got about 10 or 11 who are actively engaged in doing projects. I, I'm, obviously, you can tell I'm fairly passionate about this. Uh, I never, I don't, I don't do it for money. The, the course that we have, I have never taken a single cent by compensation. Uh, when I was in doing research, I never took any money from industry. I want to be free of that. And so um, I, whatever salary, whatever I got, I, I took what I got, but I never was in the business of trying to, you know, it was never for the purpose of making money. I have to, I would like to end on, on my father. My father was an immigrant. He only had a couple years education. He was he's from Northern Ireland. He only had a couple years education. He was a farmer, as all my family were. I was the first one in my family on either my mother's or father's side to go to college. My father was so keen on me getting an education from the farm, we lived west of Washington, D.C., so keen on that, that when I was going into eighth grade, had five years to go in high school, I drove over 100 miles a day for five straight years to go to school in Washington, D.C., at a good school. It didn't cost money. It was public. It was a lot better than a small school in our area. So I traveled close to 90,000 miles to go to high school. At the same time, working when we had the time, milking cows and doing all that sort of thing. So I, I came from a background, and my father had a great reputation in the county for his integrity. So he wanted me to go to school, as you know, my brother and others too. And so, and with his integrity, he said, well, remember, it's always saying something. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I was very close to my, my dad, and so that's what I tried to do.